designing the less interesting parts of the user interface. Unfortunately, the reality is that the majority of your time as a software developer will be spent building ways for users with a keyboard and a mouse to enter data. I know, I know, how very 1970s of us. Still, if this is the majority of our work, we need to know how to build good data input forms. Most questions in the exam on this topic will give you a scenario and expect you to draw a design for a specific type of data input user interface. I'll try and touch on this as we go, but I'll recap the key skills right at the end. The first kind of data input UI that you'll need to be able to design is a simple screen-based UI. The kind that you see all over the internet. These are your Amazon payment forms, your surveys and your Facebook pages. Well, what sort of things go into a good input screen? Well, let's take a look at some key considerations. First is the user. Well, who are they? What's their age? Are they computer literate at all? All of these questions bear considering and have an impact upon your UI decisions. Young children are going to enjoy brightly coloured UI elements with very little text, whilst the opposite might be true of boring middle-aged people. Can they even see the fields easily? Is it easy to add information to? All of these are questions that you will need to address. Even picking the best software and hardware combination for this use would be part of it. Another consideration is the layout of the form. Are you taking advantage of all the space available? No one will be willing to fill a form in if all the fields were stuck in a little corner somewhere. And cluttered forms with too much on a single page make it difficult to work with. Leave a space for all input, outputs and instructions and use plenty of white space around it. Uh, these are gaps around the elements so they're easy to focus on. Use scrolling elements if you need to, but please ensure that the layout is perfect. It's also worth splitting all the questions up into their smallest parts. Don't ask for name, as some Muppet will put their nickname. Ask for first name and last name. Do the same with address, town, county, postcode. We call this atomic values, because the data is collected in the smallest possible parts. This even includes idiotic stuff like putting similar items together and even using headings and subheadings that make sense. I mean, we joke now, but I've seen many a bad UI that has failed by putting poor headings in the wrong places. Part of this is thinking about the order that a user will read the page in. Western countries tend to work from left to right and from top to bottom. So any final action of form should be in the bottom right corner because that's the last part of the page that they read. These sort of buttons are called action buttons because they require the user to take some action and in this case it's simply clicking on it. Notice though I said Western countries. In other places around the world they read from right to left or bottom to top. So if you're designing for these markets then really reconsider putting the button at the bottom left. Fourth in our list is validation. Now hopefully you remember this from the dark days of the introduction to computing unit. It was the way in which we check that data going into our system is sensible. Here's the perfect place to use it because we're talking data input and we're taking it in so let's make sure that we reject data that's obviously wrong. Now that can be based on some simple rules or pattern matching. We can use existence checks to make sure that the user actually types something in a box, as well as simply not letting them type incorrectly formatted data into a box. This is really powerful because the user will be left wondering why nothing's happening. And if you play it right with on-screen errors and help, then they'll be able to do something about it. Fifth, and possibly the most important on our list, is the use of appropriate GUI elements in our forms. Well, why is this so wonderful? Well, the beauty of computerized data capture is that we can build and use specific controls to input specific types of data. Text boxes can be used for, well, text, yes, uh, but what about using a drop-down menu? We can force someone to pick from a list of pre-selected options. What about using checkboxes for yes or no, for true or false? 
command buttons to send, to reset or save data. The world is very literally your lobster here. Do what you want. But subtlety is key. Is that text box for a postcode? Then make it short. Is it for an address? Make it longer. Proportionally sizing the text boxes to their potential contents are subtle hints as to how much you actually want someone to write. It's a bit like the subtle hints they give you in exams with the blank lines they pre-print, hinting that you should fill those lines with writing. Those ones. Not only does this look a lot nicer, but it's also much quicker to enter data if we use specifically designed UI elements. This is key in making our user interface efficient. Our sixth and final factor is, once again, pretty good online help. Not only is it important to guide the user through the steps of input, keeping them informed and explaining why what they've tried was invalid and caused an error, but remember this. People are generally stupid. So you need some way of explaining what the enter name here box actually means. Yes, I know. But apart from putting signposts up for the very stupid to use, we can even help us normal people. You know that process that's taking ages? That thing that's making your cursor beach ball and spin like it's about to explode? Well, wouldn't it be nice if we stuck a progress bar on screen and gave an estimated time of completion? Then we could be satisfied with our UI as we know how long it's going to take to do things. So that's how you design for a screen. You take all of the things you need to collect via input and then make a nice user interface element for them to be entered into. One that's the right size, the right type, and that validates the input properly.